I'm often asked, I'm often asked, <laughs> I'm often asked what the most important tools are for a guitar builder or even a woodworker. And I can turn around and say, oh, you need a, you need a half inch chisel and you have to have a block plane and you have to have a, a number four or a number five plane for, for smoothing. And, uh, and you have to have a hand drill, or would you need to have a router if you want to make electric guitars? And I can go on, and I can say, oh, 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 you need this, and I can probably continue in that vein for half an hour. In fact, I'm going to make a video for that, it will be fun. However, without a workbench and a stable place from which to create your guitar, you are basically screwed. And. Uh, this, this is something that uh, has come to a fore with us recently, as you can see, we're in the new workshop and it's uh, coming together. But, but I arrived with, with this workbench. This is a, uh, something from Schoberg. Uh, to be honest, I bought this from my next door neighbor. I've had, I've had many benches over the years and the, the very first one that was my personal bench was something that somebody had made in a shop class uh, at a college or something like that, and I bought it for £50. It's got a, a beautiful uh, quick-release vice on the front and, and uh, a solid, real mahogany uh, top. And, you know, it was a big, heavy, workable workbench. And I, you know, I was very lucky. It was a perfect start. Uh, and I, I don't know what happened in the end, I decided I was going to take that top and turn it into a guitar. It was mahogany. And uh, I, I went from there and I built, I built myself in the workshop and I actually built it into walls and things, various cabinet style built in monstrosities. And they were stable, but not real workbenches, they were just work surfaces. Uh, anyway, about, well, a couple of years ago, I had enough of this and I said, you know what, I need a real workbench. And my neighbour happened to be selling this little Schoberg thing. And, and it's fine, it's uh, five foot long, it's got an end vice, it's got one of these funny little L-shaped things, which is too small for guitar building uh, on that side, and it's, it's doable, it looks very solid. However, one, it's too short for me, I, I do, as a guitar builder, we do a lot of hand work, and it's, your, your bench needs to be closer to you, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've heard that a lot of woodworkers have lower benches, 34 inches, and I I don't know, working like that just, just doesn't work for me, I, I, I don't understand it. So I, my, my bench needs to be sort of just below hip, uh, so you can get in there with the plane. Maybe when you're using a router it's a little bit high, possibly, but no, stand on tiptoes. Anyhow, that's an argument for a, for a later date. Uh, back to this bench. The hardware is, is fine, we've had to put leather on there to protect it. and. That isn't deep enough for putting guitar wood in, really. But the, the biggest problem is, it's not even solid. The, the, the top is, is that thick, instead of as thick as it looks. And unless it is bolted to a wall, and the floor, and anywhere else you can, it moves like you wouldn't believe. It is, it is as flimsy as it is possible for a workbench to be, and well, that's what you get when you buy your neighbor's workbench. Uh, he bought it and didn't use it, and he didn't use it for a reason. Now, so today, you might have gathered, we are about to embark on building our first we, our. I am about to build, embark on building my first ever proper workbench. Now this is interesting for, for many reasons. The main one being that I'm a guitar builder, I was trained as 
uh, traditional luthier building violins and the like and oh talking about workbenches they spent a lot of money on the workbenches for that college <sighs> go to West Dean if you want to see a nice bench big bulky and I didn't that was my first real workbench and I took it for granted entirely uh, anyhow I've completely lost my thread it is interesting because I'm a specialist woodworker I know a lot about guitar building. I know about steaming wood and about fine inlay and that sort of stuff. I don't know joinery. I, I struggle to find out, I have to think about it to figure out which is the mortise and which is the tenon. Okay. I've never really been interested in general joinery and woodworking because I was obsessed about guitars, which is fine. However, I've got to a point now where, well, being able to make a table, let alone a workbench, actually rather appeals to me. I'd like to be able to put together a jewellery box for my daughter, or a, you know, a chair. Can you imagine making a chair? Scary business. Uh, anyhow, so, I've done the research, I've read the book, go out and buy Chris Schwarz's uh, workbench design and history, or what? It's something like that. Go and buy that book. See the videos that he's done. He is a master. He's built many. This is going to be a tutorial because I'm going to be filming how I do it, but by no means treat me as the definitive answer. This is you watching a guitar builder making a bench. And uh, I'm going to be using things that I've taken directly from other people. And one of the things that Chris says in his book is, uh, well, his rules, uh, overbuild the bench, make sure it's as strong as possible. And the second rule is overbuild your bench, make sure that it's as strong as possible. And the third rule is stay married while you're overbuilding your bench. Uh, so I'm going to be taking a lot of things that I've learned from him and from other videos that I've seen, but I'm also tailoring it for a guitar builder. Now, from the design point of view, six foot, I mean, a five foot bench is doable, just, I mean, your bass isn't longer than five foot. A bass guitar isn't longer than five foot, really. I'm gonna make myself a six foot long bench. Furniture workers, furniture workers, woodworkers who do furniture making, seven foot, eight foot, if they could have a 10 foot bench, they'd like it. But that would be utterly super, superfluous for us. We don't, we don't need that much space. Um, people do the split top rubo and all of that, and the benches are, can be quite wide. We don't need a wide bench. In fact, if I can clamp a guitar, have a clamp on this side and have a clamp on that side, and it's clamping both sides of a guitar body, an electric guitar body, that for me will be incredibly useful. So I need to say, okay, well, a, a Les Paul-ish type instrument, that is 14 inches at most, I would say. So, you know, if I've got it at an angle, I could have an 18 inch, well, even a 20 inch bench, and that would just be okay. And uh, so we're going to design it specifically with guitar building in mind. We, I, I'm in the habit of saying we too much. I'm going to enjoy this. This is basically the first time I've done mortars and tenon joinery. I'm going to be using the draw bore method where, well, I'll show you and we'll <laughs> put that in. Uh, initially, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with regards to an end vise. I do like using dogs. And uh, again, I've done the research and a lot of people say that the round hole dogs are better than the square, including Chris himself. So I'm going to ignore that at the beginning of this build. I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and I've decided I'm going to defer thinking about it. At some point, I am going to put an end vise on and I'm going to drill holes for circular dogs because I think that's necessary. We're going to have a, a front vise and we're going to have various um, 
tricks and tools for guitar making in particular. All of which taken from general woodworking. So what I'm saying is uh, if you want to learn how to build guitars, go and watch some general woodworking videos. Anyhow, the design. I'm going to I'm going to scribble on a piece of paper and bring you in closer. So here we go. You all sit at tables all the time, you know what they look like. Uh, very basically, we are going to have four very large legs and mine are oh, four and a half inches square, huge. Uh, you need your rails and that is the basis for your workbench and then effectively the table goes on the top. Now, what we're going to do, and I've run out of time, <laughs> run out of space, sorry, we're going to have this very cool little thing here which effectively wedges the wood in, and that's bolted to the bench permanently, and over here I'm going to have a face vise and we'll see what those are later. Now, what I've drawn there is actually the tenon. <laughs> see, I had to think about that. The leg itself is going to be bigger and it's going to be butt up against the top of the bench so we can clamp all the way to the leg and that'll give us support and give me support for working with longer bits of wood. Now from this side that's your leg we could have sorry table table thing you could have holes drilled in put a pin in that and you have a long board that then goes into your vise over here And that allows us to work with long boards. And eventually, we will have, I will have, some sort of an end vice system. Uh, what I'm actually thinking, well, I'm going to buy something or uh, maybe just use one of the metal vices. The only difference between an end vice and a face vice is where it is. You can use a standard metal quick release vise if you, if you want to, or you can buy a kit from Veritas or something like that to put them there. And, you know, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, so effectively, that's the basic design. We want, I want it to be six foot. And the timber I've got is 20 inches. And it's almost sacrilegious to <laughs> chop any of that off. Uh, I'm going to see if 20 inches is too big for what I have in mind. If it is, I'm going to cut, chop that down. Uh, I'm using, as I've said, big four inch slabs for the, for the legs. The, the top is three inches, three and a half inches. I, guess I need to measure it. It's large. And, and that is, to all intents and purposes, what we're about to build. I... Oh, fun things. There's fun things that are going to happen. The, the interesting, I'm going to have on the end, there will be a bit of wood that sits here and can go up and down by increments. So we'll have a, a be able to put a two mil lip on the edge of the, the bench for planing down very thin material. And the same thing in the bench in places, I'm going to have pins or slots where I'll put something up and it'll protrude just above the bench and work as a locking mechanism to lock the wood that I'm working in in place. Um, and of course, long term, a set of dogs and a vice of some sort. Anyway, a very haphazard way of saying, well, let's see if we can turn that drawing into a workbench to die for.